I'm Lowell Galindo, and I'm pleased to be joined by my friends Fozzie Whitaker and Michael Griffin for a very important conversation. Gentlemen, as you know, recently a group of Texas student athletes put together a list of items concerning racism at the University of Texas that they want to be addressed before the start of the fall semester. And a group of, a large group of former student athletes, including both of you, have come together and to show us solidarity and support to rally around these current Texas student athletes. So first off, let's start with you, Mike. What was your initial reaction when that news came out? I mean, it's, it's we, I've known that it's been there. Um, I remember going through the whole recruiting process. I remember my mother and my father did not want me to go to the University of Texas because of what uh, Texas was founded upon. They wanted me to go to another school. But I made the decision to go there because I thought it was best for my career, best for me, what I, my endurance, playing football and everything else. But um, I, I do support the young men that are there now because, again, it's their fight, it's their platform. And I don't think as alumni we need to step over them, but I think that we need to just show them that support because they're young kids and they're making a big, big decision. And I really feel like they're the ones that uh, that's risking it all when it comes to, 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 to taking a stand right now. You know, on, on my behalf, man, I, I am really proud of these guys, number one, to be able to step out there in the national spotlight to uh, garnish this attention. Uh, a lot of things have been happening in this country that has caused this to uh, kind of bubble up and, and allow them to speak out. But I'm very proud of the courage that hey, they have shown up to this point to get this thing going, which I feel like is long overdue for these guys to have the courage to actually stand up and fight against it. I commend them. I was surprised, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm happy that they did it. So why do you think it has taken until the Black Lives Matter movement to finally have this addressed on a large scale? Whenever you have the allies, the amount of support that you have from people that are not black or not Hispanic, uh, it, it means a lot. And I think right now in this time frame, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, this is the most amount of support that I've seen from friends, family, uh, people that I don't even know that are chanting Black Lives Matter in our own board with the movement. And, and I think with that type of uh, surge and people that are not just people of color, I think a lot of change can be made. Griff, what do you think? I think right now, just this day and air, I mean, the way the social media is, I think the fact that we've been in quarantine for the last three months and, and people had opportunity to sit back and realize and think about a lot of different things. And I think that, you know, 2020, you know, people said this was the year. And I think this is the year. Um, it may not be going the way that we planned for it to go, but, you know, for, for collectively all together to be able to, to, to people to start having conversations and people to start understanding. Um, rest in peace, George Floyd. But I think when people actually physically saw the depth of this man for eight minutes and 46 seconds, um, I think no matter how your heart was, uh, you know, I think people never saw things like this. People didn't believe that it really existed. And I think that allowed people to see that, wow, this was cold hearted um, man that was killed in broad daylight, uh, let alone by police officers. And, and I think it just uh, urged an uproar. And uh, this is just an opportunity that, you know, hey, let's 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 ride this wave. Uh, you know, let's let's set aside our feelings and our personal beliefs and things. And let's really uh, acknowledge that there really is an issue that is out there. And it's, and it's an underlying issue. And, and I just again, back to the young men that are at the University of Texas right now and the young women also um, they're, they're I, I applaud them to be able to take a stance and, and to fight for what they believe is right. Part of that stance is the list of items that they would like to be addressed and changed before the start of the fall semester. It's a list that includes the University of Texas, the, the song everybody sings uh, after the football game, the Eyes of Texas. It also includes removing statues and renaming buildings that are named after or that depict people that were racist or had racist ties. So what do you think of that specific list? I believe all the things that the players have requested are actually obtainable and doesn't necessarily need a degree of debate or trying to have a negotiation about it. If we're really looking at ourselves and saying as a country, we want to be more diverse and we want to be more inclusive. Uh, what starts here changes the world. If we truly believe that, then I believe that you take people's hearts and the way that they feel into consideration. And whenever you're proposed or you have this request by, by these student athletes saying, hey, 
These things make us feel very uncomfortable. We do not like it. And this is not just football players that are speaking. We're talking about all the black kids on campus, all the black kids that have aspired to live in Texas uh, around the country. Almost. It, 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 it's one of those things that, hey, these things have offended us for a long time. And it hasn't been addressed properly. And now we want to address it properly. And I think it's something that if we want to move forward as a better society, it's something that can be done. Like I said, Texas has already taken the steps to do that several times by adding other statues, by taking down and renaming other other buildings. It is just as this is just a continuation of things that have already been put in place. What's the ramifications if those requests are not addressed, if there is no change that is made or minimal change even at that level um, that is made with these requests. What do you think it means for the current student athletes, for the former student athletes, and for future potential student athletes at the University of Texas? Fozzie, why don't you go first? Uh, so if the requests aren't made or minimal actions happen, you know, I, I think there will be uh, a, a rebuttal from the players aspect of it, you know. Um, the thing about it is you don't want the players to, to kind of lose the opportunity that they came to University of Texas for, which is to get their degree and, and play football ultimately. But uh, if the players are not comfortable continuing this fight, then it's something that I've been a part of a former athlete team that uh, that created kind of that social post to spread amongst others. I feel like it's up to us to continue the fight, to push for them whenever they are not able to. We can kind of take up the torch and, and continue to fight because, like I said, these are changes that I feel like need to be made and can be made very easily. And, and I don't think the university would, would miss out on much by, by making the changes that these athletes have requested. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's curious because uh, I'm, I'm really, like Fozzie alluded to, I'm curious on how far they're willing to take it. Um, are they willing to sit out? Are they willing to, to to jeopardize their 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 careers when it comes to playing college football or whatever it may be? So I, I'm really curious, and I think that's a conversation that us as alumni need to have with them and let them know that we do have their backs. Um, but I, I, I'm really curious because right now we're we're in the month of uh, June. You still got July, and then next thing you know, training camp starts. If God forbids, uh, with everything going on outside of this. But um, I'm really curious on how far the athletes will them take it. We're talking about a small window of time of making uh, quite a few changes that they're asking uh, for. So it, it, it's it's I don't think it's something that's going to happen overnight. It has to have conversations. Uh, I think somebody has to step up, step up as the vocal leader when it comes to this team. Uh, you know, you can't have everybody on different accords and everybody with different opinions and things of that nature. So I think it's somewhere they got to come together as athletes, uh, as alumni, and everybody singing the same song instead of people singing different songs. And I think that's the most important to show that we are together and we are united. Right now we're talking about a physical list, right? Physical mm -hmm. buildings, physical uh, statues, monuments, and a song. But at the heart of all of this, what are the student athletes actually asking for? What are they trying to get? Somebody to have their back. And that's what I truly believe is that if you put yourself out there, are, there, are they going to feel like they're being left out in the wind or are they going to have somebody to show support? Hey, we see it your way. We've done it this way in the past and we know it causes pain. We have you on this. We will look into it and continue to move forward to try to make this university a, a better campus for everybody. I think what they're looking for is like like Fozzie said, uh, uh, you want that support. You want us to be supported as men, not as players, not as what we can do on that football field or basketball court, uh, baseball field, whatever it is. I want you to look at me as a man, because at the end of the day, if I can't run a football, if I can't do anything when it comes to sports or entertainment, I want you to still look at me as a man, as a human being that bleeds us that inside, we're exactly the same. Outside, we may have different appearances. And I think that's what, as all the Black Lives Matter, is just look at us as men, look at us as equals, not greater, not less than, but as equals. So guys, help fans out there understand that the young men that they are rooting for and cheering for on the field is the same young black man that's asking for change away from the field. I would say put yourself in their position, um, not as an athlete, but as an everyday black man. Um, have those conversations. I, I would suggest, you know, as a fan, the next black man that you see, have a conversation with him. Ask him. Every day in America, what is it like? 
have that conversation because you got to take away the longhorn on the side of the helmet. You got to take away the name on the front that says Texas. But understand that that man that you're talking about, that that player, he's representing that person that's on the back of his jersey, that name. And that name is what he's carrying each and every day when he's away from that field. That's who he is as a person. That's who he is as a human being. I had to learn this in the National Football League that that locker stays there. That number stays there. But that name on the back of that lock, that name on that back of that jersey, the name on that locker changes each and every time they cut that person. So I would tell each and every fan that have that conversation. Next black man that you see, young black male that you see, have that conversation and ask them because – they're not going through any different than any other black male or black woman is going through in this in this world today. They're not anything is no different when they take that football like when they take that football helmet off and those pads off. They're going through the exact same thing that every other black man is going through out in the U.S. You know, Jordan Whittington summed it up perfectly in his tweet where he uh, emphasized that he's Texas running back for a few years, been black all his life in America. So it, it's one of those things that. Before you are a student athlete, before you put on those pads, before you put on the jersey, before you go score touchdowns for all these thousands of fans, like you grew up black. And, and at that time, it, during this time now, you, you see the, the empowerment. But, uh, you know, back in the past, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, that empowerment was not there. People weren't really proud to necessarily be representing black culture to the degree that it's being praise for right now just because we were in fear in fear that we may be hurt in fear that uh people may get killed uh you know police may shoot us like th there was a lot of fear with being black in america which is why as a black young individual i was taught certain things on how to try to avoid conflict uh different ways to resolve situations so that it doesn't come back and harm me and that i may go see my family at the end of the day and it comes back to the understanding and just getting clarification, try to try to like, like Griff said, you know, you can't really put yourself in the shoes of a black man, but you can try to understand as much as you can by having a conversation with them and being open and, and being, and, and being able to listen to what they're saying, because ultimately that's how we feel. That's how it's been in America. And if you can get a better understanding of what we are talking about, what we've gone through, what we feel, then, hey, it may help you to spread the word to other people within your community and it create a safer environment and a better place for black people and people of, uh, of color and minorities uh, across the country. Now, if you guys were currently playing, how far would you be willing to go to make sure that these change happen? Because I will point out, the way the system in college football is structured right now, it is not structured to be beneficial to guys who, and this is quote unquote, rock the boat. Even though they are standing up for things that need to change, there will be a perception out there by other college coaches, other programs that these guys are trying to rock the boat. Colin Kaepernick is a great example of that in the NFL. He can't find another team. So how far would you guys be willing to go to get these changes? To me, it goes back to Griff's point. The team has to be unified on a way that they're trying to approach this situation and, and just sending out the same message. I truly believe there's strength in numbers. So if you have a majority of the team that is on board with sitting out or not practicing or not going to the donor meetings or not helping in recruiting like they've already said, if you, if you have – a lot of the team already on board, it applies more pressure, I think, to, to administration at the University of Texas to show that, hey, these guys are unified. They're not going to go away. And, and if we do not act fast enough or in a manner that they are seeking, uh, I know the changes won't happen overnight, but something can be written up that says, hey, we we will start working on this or, or something along those lines. If that doesn't happen, then th these players have to be ready to make a, a statement, whether it's not going to practice or, or not helping in the donors or the recruiting. From my perception, my perspective, it seems like the biggest split among Texas fans is what to do with the eyes of Texas. So from your perspective, what do you think about the eyes of Texas and, and the racial undertones that, if you look into it, certainly lie within that song? I'll go, I'll go ahead and start. So for me, 
Uh, I didn't know about the racial undertones prior to attending the University of Texas. I, I took my first AFR class once I got on campus as a freshman. Uh, and Dr. Gordon uh, actually was the one that taught me that uh, the, the, the background behind the song and everything that kind of went into the meaning of the song. And as, since then, I, I never sung it. I would throw the horns up because I still love my university, but I never sung the song because of, of those racist undertones. And now people really have that information and, and the true understanding, or at least most people do, uh, the, the information is readily available. And, and I think they can make their informed decision about, uh, you know, kind of the next steps to take. But this song definitely is rooted in history of racism, uh, all the way going from the original theme of the song. I've been working on the railroad, linking back to minstrel shows. And then in 1903, the minstrel show where it was first sung at the University of Texas on campus grounds, uh, linking to the minstrel shows. Like it, it shows you that everything this song is about is truly about slaving black people and oppressing black people. And I think people of color do not really appreciate the song, no matter if you went to Texas or, or just around the country, just that, that's a demeaning and a, a degrading song. Uh, even if they change the, the eyes of Texas, you know, it was the eyes of the South, but it, it still has those same undertones. And I think it's something that should be dealt with. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if the song does change, we have another song, Texas Fight. That's something that I feel like can still unify a lot of the teams. It's already sung. Uh, that, that's something that can be a, a, a replacement for, for the eyes of Texas, just because now that the information has been out there, everybody knows that this song hurts a particular group of people. Will they be moral in the decision of saying, you know, this hurts them, let's try to find a way to fix it. Or will they just turn a blind eye and be like, no, this is tradition. We're going to try to stick to it because this is what I was raised on. I, I, I'm for me. And again, I, 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 I knew going to Texas. I knew cause I born raised here in Austin, been there, seen that, done that, whatever it may have been. And, and, I knew what Texas was based on. I, even with the eyes of Texas, I knew what the song was based off of. Um, I stayed true to myself. I knew who I was as a black person. I was honored by that. I knew what I was. Um, will to change the song? I, it, it, it definitely can be done. I mean, people can easily rewrite songs. I mean, there's musicians everywhere. Um, it's, it's, I'm just curious on how the University of Texas will handle this because we do know that the boosters and things of that nature think this is tradition. And as the blacks, we feel like this is can be changed because again with the demeanor and when it comes from the where it came from and things of that nature so i'm, I'm curious on how they're going to handle the situation because again it's part of the demands from the athletes um i saw they did make a suggestion that well can we just not be forced to sing the song and I, that you know I, I wonder if that's where since that was you know advising to to the, one of the demands i wonder if that's where they say is we're going to keep the song but you don't have to sing the song but again, I feel like that still will have an underlying issue because at the end of the game, when everybody's singing it, and me as a black athlete, and I'm just sitting there on the field with my horns up, I'm it's, it, you're going to still internalize. You're still going to hear it over and over and over again. So I, I'm just curious on how they're going to handle that situation. Um, I'm sure, I'm not, I'm 100 percent sure that they could definitely you know rewrite the song or change the, the tone of it or or whatever they can do. There's a way of get to, to that. I think that's definitely an easy fix that could be done. And again, most of the reaction with the eyes of Texas has been, you can't do away with it. You can't change it because this is a song that brings it us together as a fan base. But Fozzie, as I'm hearing from you, it's quite obvious it does not bring everybody together if you are not included in that unity. Definitely. I talked yesterday with, with a professional on campus uh, just about some of the, the issues uh, that the players have brought up and kind of what has been the response uh, among some of the faculty. And uh, he told me that it's people within the band that have discord with the song and do not plan to play it. And now I don't know how true it is, but for for this conversation to have reached that point where people have have been making their own decision before the university even says we're going to do away with it or we're going to keep it people have already made up in their minds that they're not going to honor this song uh and, and it's people of different colors it's not just black people uh it, it was other people that he expressed to me had had some sort of feeling towards this and i think the more informed you are about situations the better you can make a decision 
moving forward a more sound decision about what you're trying to do. And so now that the information has been put out there, what will people do? And I know the university can do one thing, but people can also ultimately do another. So, guys, what is it like to be a black student athlete at the University of Texas and know that there still are many things that need to be addressed? There are songs that many people sing with racial undertones. There are statues, buildings named after people with very checkered past. What is that like to walk around that and, and be part of that? I think for myself, I mean, I, I, I'll go with my experience. You know, for me, walking on campus, I just did not care. My main goal was to go out there and be the best football the player that I could be each and every day, get my education and follow through. Um, be the second person generation in my family, my mother, my father being the first to get college degrees, me being the second with my brother, to be able to put that on my wall. Uh, but I knew what Texas was about going there, but I just – just chose to to be blinded by all that and stay focused and stay at a course. And, and that was just me because I was never going to let anything hold me back. I was not going to allow anything to, to, to slow me down. And that was my mindset. And that's my mindset now is that I'm going to do anything in my power to make sure that I'm successful, with whatever I do. So on campus, I mean, my main goal was to just get in there, get my degree and play football, get out of there. It wasn't to try to socialize and be with every, that just wasn't my, my, my game plan. That wasn't my goals when I was there. I was just like Griff, man. Whenever I first came in, my mindset was, was straight, get to the mission. You know, I was come, I came here to get my degree and I came here to play football. Everything else was kind of outside noise to me. And I just put on my blinders and went to work. And that's kind of the way that, um, I, I just approached things, uh, approach schoolwork, you know, everything. I just wanted to attack it and, and get better at it. And, and that was my mindset going through it until about my junior year. And, and I really started embracing kind of the teachings that I had in my AFR classes from Dr. Gordon, uh, Dr. Moore, uh, people that that were influential in the black community, uh, because it really started opening my eyes that these people want to help other black kids. And I see these black kids struggling. What are ways that I can step in to be able to try to be a liaison or try to provide some resources for these other black kids to try to reach the point that I'm at? And, and seeing the things that happen on campus as far as the Barbara Jordan statue going up, I was there for that. That made me very proud to be a black man on the University of Texas campus, let alone a black woman. Black women are the ones that are, are I feel like, looked over the most. And for them to put a statue of a prominent black woman on campus, that was a, a truly truly great moment in, in in the history i think of the university of texas seeing them rename the dorms from a ku klux klan member to something that obviously didn't have racial undertones that made me feel good as a black guy and appreciate it seeing them put up the cesar chavez statue uh that that was awesome we're embracing diversity of multiple cultures so if you are not black what is the best way to show solidarity to show support with this movement by the current Texas student athletes? I think the best thing to do is listen. And I mean by listen, listen to comprehend, don't listen to respond. And that's what a lot of people do these days is they listen to respond because they want to have a rebuttal. They want to always have a response to something little that you may have said instead of see the overall picture. And that's the one thing is have conversations, understand to comprehend and understand where that other person, you know, shut, turn your feelings off and listen and comprehend don't listen with your feelings because a lot of times that will put a wall up to keep someone from understanding what you're trying to come from so that's the main thing is have conversations gentlemen let's wrap it up here when will you know that true change has happened on campus and around the university of texas griff let's start with you it's, it's going to take time but when you know true changes you know when you when at this point right now it got to be conversations. And when I start seeing that there's conversations, then I see that there's a change. A lot of times you just cut people off. You don't even want to listen to them or you say, hey, listen, y'all, we don't care what you say. I think the start change got us to open up with conversations. Um, you know, taking one thing from those conversations can, can definitely mean a lot. Um, and when they address a change, I think that's what we're going to know. But right now, being able to say, let's start having conversations. I'm not for sure if they have started those conversations yet. I know there's been a lot of things going on via social media, but until we see actions, until we see that things that are going on, um, of course, we get to talk to the players a lot 
here and there. And I know people that know people, other players. But until I hear that there's conversations that are going on and it's not just a, a social media battle or let me say this on social media to make things sound good, um, <laughs> I think at that point I would realize that change is being made. But right now it's I got to start seeing conversations to understand that there's some dialogue going on between the, the, the black community or, you know, different race community at the University of Texas and the higher ups. Definitely. And, and I agree 100 percent, too. It's, it starts with the conversation and and speaking with some of the people that I spoke to uh, yesterday, they've already said that some of these conversations with administration and black faculty has already started. So they've already begun those talks. Uh, but the action is obviously going to be the thing that we really start to base uh, how we feel about the situation is whenever action really becomes prominent. And uh, not to say the university hasn't been doing things like I, I've already talked about the things that they've done in the past with the statues and, and renaming a building already. But whenever you continue to do those things and, and doing it at a pace that isn't every five years, then I feel like that's whenever you can start realizing that the true change is uh, amongst us and that action is, is really happening. So. Uh, I, I can say that they're already starting that change. They're already starting those conversations. Now we just need to see the, the benefits of it. Griff, Fozzie, that was an in-depth, insightful, beautiful conversation. I really appreciate your time, really appreciate your insight. And it's, uh, it's very admirable, the job that you're doing with the current student athletes to help them define their voice so they can seek the change that truly is not just better for them, but better for everyone um, everywhere. So gentlemen, thank you so much for the time and thank you so much for your commitment to the change. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.